I want to talk about something that, uh, you know, that I've been thinking about recently, because that's what philosophers do. We think about stuff and then we, we, we talk about it. Um, uh, and it's uh, an approach to the, the, the sorts of issues that uh, uh, sort of unite us all here as, uh, you know, if I may collectively use the term, free thinkers. That's, I, I, th I suspect, a little bit novel. I'd like to hope it's a little bit novel uh, uh, to, to, to your ears. Uh, it's, it's, it's novel, it seems, to, to, to many of my professional colleagues when I put the idea out there, so I'm hoping that means it'll be new to you guys, too. So, um, uh, let's start by asking sort of, you know, what do, what do we think of when we think about a free thinker? And this is the other little free thinkers. Uh, what sorts of people fall under that umbrella? Uh, you, you probably make a short list in your head. You can think atheists, agnostics, skeptics, secular humanists, maybe a, a few other things under that umbrella. Um, and at various times in my life, at various uh, different social circumstances, all of these terms can describe me to, to more or less of an accurate degree. I think, you know, I've, I've called myself all of these things at one point or another. Um, but nowadays, uh, that's not, uh, while some of those things are still true of me, that's not how I, I see myself. That's not how I identify myself. Uh, uh, they, they're still true in the way that, you know, uh, it's true that I'm a vertebrate, but I don't go around thinking of myself as a vertebrate. That's simply not something that's part of my sense of self. Uh, I'm a eukaryote. I'm a multicellular organism. I'm all sorts of things that are true. You know, there's all sorts of true descriptions of me that don't contribute to my sense of self. So uh, I, I think it's fair to call me an, an atheist or you know, perhaps an agnostic, depending on how exactly you want to define these terms. Definitely a skeptic. Um, but that's, that's no longer how I see myself. Um, the way I see myself, uh, uh, the, the, the term for it is apatheist, uh, which, if you can sort of piece it out from the word right there, uh, is a combination of theist and apathy, uh, which means basically, I just don't care. I don't care whether or not God exists. I don't think it makes a difference. Um, I think that, uh, in, in the most general senses, uh, however you spell out, however you think about God, however you identify God, um, it really won't make a difference in any deep or profound sense at all whether or not God exists. Um, now, I am, am hardly the first philosopher to make this claim. Uh, uh, the first person who, who I've been able to locate who's made a similar claim uh, was Denis Diderot, uh, who was an 18th century French philosopher and friend of Voltaire. Vol Voltaire sent him a letter saying he had heard him being accused of being an atheist, and Voltaire wondered how Diderot responded to this. And his response here, I'm quoting him directly, is, It is very important not to mistake hemlock for parsley because one is poisonous and the other is, uh, is not. But it is not at all so to believe or not in God. In other words, uh, a simple uh, mistake about whether or not the green stuff you're about to put on your pasta is parsley or hemlock will make a huge difference. But uh, and a simple mistake as to whether or not God exists makes no difference at all. Um, Friedrich Nietzsche is another person who suggested this. His famous quote, or perhaps infamous quote, God is dead is one of these hyperbolic claims that is often misinterpreted. People, you know, sort of read Nietzsche as simply making a statement about atheism, but if you really think about it for a moment and unpack the idea, God is dead, you'll see it's sort of ridiculous on its face. God, by definition, is immortal. How can an immortal being die? Well, when you see something like that, Nietzsche's messing with your mind. Uh, he, he wants you to sort of, you know, get outside your comfort zone there. What Nietzsche meant when he said God is dead is not that there is an immortal being that is now dead, but rather that whether or not God exists is irrelevant. God can't solve our problems. We have to solve our own problems. So you can go ahead and assume God exists, but you still have to deal with the same existentialist crisis that the rest of us do. Um, at least that's the way I interpret Nietzsche. He's, of course, a famously uh, fickle philosopher to interpret in many ways. But I want to go a step further, actually, than either Diderot or Nietzsche here. And I want to step into what we might call militant apathyism, which is to say, I don't care, and you don't either. <laughs> now, I suspect for a lot of you this will not be as hard to sell as it will would for a more diversified audience. But nonetheless, I'm going, to, I'm going to pitch it as though you were a resistant audience, because, well, that's what philosophers are used to. So I, I want to push this in a way that, uh, uh, that presupposes you will be hard to win over here. Um, so, I, I, I want to broaden that. It's not just me, it's not just you. I think the vast majority of human beings on the planet, actually, don't care whether or not there's a God. They think they care. They think it makes a big difference to their lives. 
But uh, in point of fact, if the right series of circumstances were to happen, if they were to think about it the right way, I believe they would realize it actually does not make a difference to them. So uh, this is a qualified claim. I'm not saying absolutely everybody. Indeed, there are some people on the planet who it, it does make an honest to God difference to. Uh, I just think there's nowhere near as many as is commonly assumed, uh, even by people who themselves commonly assume that they care, that they think God exists. Um, so this is a presumptuous claim on my part. Again, I, it is a, a, perhaps an arrogant thing to say that I know what these people care about more than they themselves know what they care about. Uh, that is the kind of thing that requires an intellectual defense. You can't simply make a claim like that and then expect people to accept it. Uh, but thankfully, I'm a professionally trained philosopher, and making arguments is what I do for a living. So allow me to make that argument. Um, so to, to start, let's look at what theists and atheists have in common, uh, despite all their many disagreements. They all seem to agree that it's an uh, important question whether or not God exists. Uh, it is the question, according to some people, the big question. It's, it's one of those things that humans have wrestled with since the dawn of time. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a classic philosopher's question. It's the sort of uh, question that I like to, to deal with in my philosophy of religion classes. Um, so it seems, uh, again, it's a sensible presupposition to think that it matters uh, and that this is an important question. Uh, on the theist side of things, uh, you get people like William James and John Hick, who are two of the more important uh, uh, philosophers slash theologians of the last 200 years, two, uh, both, both American uh, uh, theologian philosophers. Um, they, they both d d d describe the God question as the single most important question that humanity has ever asked. Uh, so that's a, a, a pretty uh, aggressive denial of, what, of the claim I'm making here. Um, it's worth noting that neither of them really explain why that is. Uh, they both sort of just assume that it's one of those things that, that everyone will understand is why it's an important question. Uh, and as much as they do try to sort of say why it's an important question, I think they quickly start deviating from the question of God and start talking about other questions. That's a point I will return to uh, in a moment, a point of clarification. Um, on the other side of things, uh, you know, you know, we, we just gave away a copy of, of, of Christopher Hitchens' book, God is Not Great. Uh, 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 Christopher Hitchens describes himself as an anti-theist. It's not just that he doesn't believe in God, he hopes God does not exist. Clearly, he thinks the question matters. You know, he, he's crossing his fingers that there is no God. And he has I mean, compelling and interesting arguments that I don't have time to tackle here. Um, but I simply want to use this as an illustration of uh, an atheist who clearly thinks it matters whether or not God exists. Uh, many other atheists uh, describe themselves as saying, well, I don't believe in God, but I really wish I did. You know, I, 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 I used to believe in God. Perhaps I remember what it was like. It felt good to believe in God, and I miss that. Uh, so some atheists describe themselves in that way, uh, and it seems that they really care whether or not God exists, like Hitchens cares, like James cares, like John Hick cares. Um, uh, and I want to say, again, not necessarily about these individuals per se, but uh, uh, the, this sounds like a much more popular presupposition than I believe it is. Uh, um, they, they all agree it makes a difference. Uh, I want to deny that claim. I do not think it makes a difference one way or the other. Now, I suspect that at least some of you are thinking, um, I'm, again, I'm being hyperbolic here. I'm, I'm exaggerating for comic effect. And uh, to an extent, that is true. Um, I want to clarify my central claim. There is a sense in which I care whether or not God exists. Uh, I am a philosopher. I care about the truth. Uh, and if so, if it is true that God exists, that's something that I would like to know. That is something that I would care about. In that sense, I do indeed care about whether or not God exists. Um, but I don't know how, if you guys have much exposure to philosophers, but we care about weird things. <laughs> I'm the kind of guy you can sit around with having a debate for hours about whether or not numbers are real. Okay, I, I, will, I will have long conversations about the ontology of set theory until the cows come home. Um, but this is not the kind of thing that's going to make a radical, profound difference in my life. I mean, even if, I, even if that was my academic specialty, it wouldn't make a radical, profound difference in my life. Um, so, yeah, I, I care about it as an academic question. Um, but anything beyond the academic, the ways in which God is supposed to matter, in the sort of deep existential spiritual senses, uh, I, I think that, uh, that the question is irrelevant, the question is immaterial. Um, you could prove to me right now, absolutely, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that God exists and it wouldn't change my plans for the night. I would plan on hanging out with you fine people, going home watching a little Buffy the Vampire Slayer and falling asleep. And, and that would be it. And then my weekend would continue pretty much the way I have it planned. It would not transform anything in my life. 
um, even if I were to undergo right now a complete spontaneous reconversion to faith. Uh, I do not believe it would change me um, in any sort of profound way. Um, 